Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video, I'm responding to viewer requests. Long time ago, I created a video about G-code and that has generated a few comments. Let's read them and see what we can do. The first comment is by Marcelo and he writes, Hello sir, is it possible to show how to machine a new MDF 16mm wasteboard? Thank you. I want to replace the original with one more rigid and personalize it with my name. That is a great idea and I'm going to do it just probably in the July, June, July-ish time frame and here is why. So this is the original MDF waste board that the Snapmaker CNC comes with uh, and that is about 12 millimeter or half an inch. So I have two ideas for the project. One of them is to create a thicker board but follow the exact same hole pattern that we see here. So the holes for the inserts and the attachment holes to the uh, Snapmaker bed. I'm going to follow that one for one. And my other idea is to do the thicker board, uh, have the proper attachment holes, but then use T-tracks so that you can basically slide back and forth your attachment pieces that you use to secure your workpiece. So that's going to involve a little bit more thinking, a little bit more research, more measurement and more thinking. So that's why I'm going to delay it up until the June, July time frame. Now, the second comment is by Ulysses and they write, Hello, first of all, great video. It was very clear and helped me figure out some cloudy things I had not completely understood. I'm currently working on a way to make the Snapmaker A350 turn into a loop for demonstration with the laser cutting module and with the laser off. Do you know if it's possible to make a loop in G-code or even better directly with the Snapmaker Luan software? First of all, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad that my video was able to help you. And that's why I create those videos, a bit more education to help people in their CNC uh, adventure. Uh, so the outright answer to the question, is it possible to make a loop in G-code is no. Uh, as we know it, and as we know it in any other programming languages like Java, PHP, C++, Python, shell scripting for Linux, they all have the ability to do some sort of a loop, i.e. repeat the same uh, set of instructions all over again. But for G-code, currently it is not possible. But there are ways around it, and I'm gonna use this video to show my ways of doing what is required here. Now, as far as I understand it, uh, it is for demonstration with the laser module just moving around, but without the laser cutting or burning anything. So that's kind of like going to your regular day job where you walk around the uh, cubicles and you do nothing. <laughs> well, of course, I'm joking. So let's see how I do it. Here we are at the Snapmaker Luban software where I previously created a few shapes. No, no, delete, delete, delete. Now, this was a little awkward. Now, these shapes that are, and the way that I placed them all of a sudden looked like a face with starry eyes and big wide open mouth. So let's not get in trouble and instead insert some text. Some text here. And let's give it some random font. Well, something that is actually readable instead of just squares. And let's move it somewhere here. Now, the reason why I went with such big shapes and that's because to use the maximum area of the Snapmaker bed, which is uh, 34 by 32 centimeters. Uh, but technically you can place this anywhere you want and it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna focus on this. So now the idea is to figure out a way how to basically repeat all those shapes a uh, number of times and also make sure that the laser doesn't get turned on. Now for that we're gonna go into the process tab and we're gonna create a tool path from our first shape which is the heart. Always select on the path and that will ensure that it is going to move only along the outline of the heart. Of course we have the work speed. What we're gonna focus now is the so-called pass. 
So number of passes is the number of times that the uh, snap maker is going to execute that particular shape. In our case, it's the heart. Uh, the maximum number of passes as per the software defaults is 50. So I'm going to enter 100, move to the next field, and it automatically goes back to 50. So the 50 is your maximum number of passes. Z step per pass. Uh, the minimum you can go, if I enter 0, is 0 0.01. Now, why do we need to know the maximum and the minimum? And that's because when you multiply those two, the number of passes and the Z step per pass, that should not exceed 6 millimeters. Uh, 6 millimeters is roughly the focal length of the existing 1.6 watt module that the Snapmaker has. At least that's my observation. I haven't really taken it down to definitive uh, caliper measurement, but roughly 6 millimeters is what I put from the surface of my, uh, my area to where the laser module uh, begins. So multiplying those two, it should not exceed 6 millimeters. Obviously, there are safeguards uh, for that, so maximum number of passes is 50 and the Z stepper pass is 0 0.1. So, if you have more than one pass, you are definitely going to have the Snapmaker go down a little bit. So, let's make sure that it goes down the minimal amount. And laser power, of course, zero. So, let's save that. Now let's move on to the next object which is the star and pretty much do the same thing. Create a tool path on the path, number of passes being 50 and minimal uh, Z stepper pass is one, uh, I guess, 0 0.01 millimeters. So we save that one. We replicate the same for this particular shape. And finally, the text. And we save all those four. Now, once we generate the G-code, let's see how many minutes or how many hours it is going to take. So just doing those four shapes 50 times each is going to take 15 hours and 34 minutes. Now, depending on the needs, you know, 15 hours might be too long or 15 hours might be too short. So you might want to adjust one of two things. The first thing is the work speed. Now it's at the 140 millimeters per minute. Now you can simply bump that to 500. And once the G-code is recalculated, it goes down to 11 hours. So we just shaved off four hours just by increasing the work speed. The other thing you can do is also reduce the number of passes. So instead of just doing uh, the hard shape for hours on end, you know, you can do uh, the hard shape, let's say 10 times, and then you move 10 times to the one star, 10, 10 times to the other star. So we're gonna go with 10. And that shaved off another hour or so. And we repeat that for the other two shapes. So let's do the 500 and 10. Uh, star number two, 500 and 10. And finally, the text at 510. And from 15 hours, we are down to 55 minutes just by changing the speed and the number of passes. Now, the other thing you can do is this. Once you have done the four shapes, you can always go back to, let's say, shape number one, which is our heart shape. Let me go into edit mode. Uh, go back to the heart shape uh, and create another tool path for that heart shape. And the Snapmaker Luban software is not going to reject that. So let's do this 500, 10, 0, and 0. 
So as we can see, uh, two path number five, this is the heart shape and two path number one again is the heart shape. So that's another way to go into a loop, simply repeat the two path over and over again. Uh, now, the reason why I did the four shapes and then going back and repeating the four shapes again is just to simply have a little break. Uh, you don't want to have, let's say, the heart shape going for five hours and then the stars for another five hours. If you want to have a little break, uh, then you, you do something like this. You limit the number of passes, one, two, ten. Uh, then you execute all other shapes and then you execute everything all over again. So basically you are the loop at the moment creating the two paths that will generate the G code later on. Now let me repeat this whole thing for the other two paths and let's see how much uh, are we going to in terms of uh, timing and hours? And finally the text. And once we generate the G code, So four hours, and that's how you adjust uh, either the speed or the number of passes, or you create additional two path of the same uh, uh, object in order to uh, go into a loop and do that demonstration. Now, what I'm gonna do is reduce everything to one and execute those eight two paths on the SnapMaker, and I'm gonna record that and we're gonna put that into the video and I'll see you after the G-code has been executed. And as we saw from the sped up video, the SnapMaker moved a lot without doing much of anything. And that's what we basically wanted. Now, there was something surprising and here is what happened. Uh, you all saw me using zero as the laser power, but when I generated the G code and threw it into the SnapMaker, the laser turned on at 100%. 
And the reason why I know the laser turned at 100% is that I followed it with this stick of wood and there are a little burn marks right here. Now I aborted the job and proceeded to investigate what happened. Now I deleted the original G-code file, so I'll try to explain it using the one of the subsequent ones that I created. So the original G-code file did not have this particular M3 power something speed something. It just had that empty M3 command without being followed by any parameters. And this is what turned the laser power at 100% because the M3 command is turn the two head. Without any parameters, default 100%. Uh, I then went back to the Luban software and for laser power I decided to use 0.1%. When I regenerated the G-code, that's when I got that extra M3 command preceding the empty M3 command that basically said uh, M3, so turn the two head on, power 0.1%, fan speed 0. And that's what I ran subsequently and that's what you saw on the video and as you saw there was no laser power at all. Uh, then I figured why not I go back and change the laser power to zero, but then the subsequent G-code file, it had that extra M3 command in it. So it was a little surprising to me that the initial file didn't have that uh, M3 command, but the subsequent one has it. So moral of the story is always try to inspect the file before loading it and before running it. Now, if the file is small, you can simply open it in a text editor software and either delete every single M3 command or use your find and replace uh, functionality to replace an empty M3 command with uh, M3 command that's followed by some power settings. For large files, especially the 15 hour G code that we saw earlier, you know, in case you're uh, doing, you know, the repetitions of 50, your easiest bet is to go to the Luban software and use a laser power of 0.1%. And again, that doesn't turn on the laser. It just makes sure that there is a value that the software has to account for when it creates the G-code. Now, uh, aside from that, everything ran fine. So that's it for this particular video. If you liked it, make sure to like, share and subscribe and also hit the notification bell to get notified of my future video releases. Also follow me on all social media channels and consider supporting me on Patreon. All the links are down in the description.